This video is gonna feature my updated Urban EDC Backpack version 4.0. This particular backpack is the Vertex Gamut 2.0 backpack. Previously, I was using a Vertex Messenger bag for my EDC bag, but I switched to a backpack style because there are some capabilities with this particular backpack that I wanted to have moving forward. So there's a lot to cover in this video. As always, I've included a PDF document. You can download it by clicking the link in the description box below. It has a list of all the items that are gonna be covered in this video. There's there's a lot to get to, so let's get right down to it. This is my Urban EDC Backpack version 4.0. Let's get started. If you happen to stumble upon this video and you have no idea how you got here, I'd like to welcome you to my channel. My name's Cliff, also known as The Urban Prepper, and I cover various emergency preparedness topics and gear reviews. So if you like those type of videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you end up not liking it, after 30 day money back guarantee, you could always unsubscribe. I also have a newsletter that you could click. There's a link in the description box below. I provide it weekly and monthly with a little bit more background information to some of the emergency preparedness planning that I'm doing in addition to upcoming videos. So click the link in the description box below if you're interested in that too. Let's start off first by going over the items that are on the exterior of the Vertex Gamma 2.0 backpack. On the right shoulder strap, I have an LED safety light. Just in case I need to travel by night, I include this clip-on backpack LED to make myself a little bit more visible. On the left shoulder strap, I have a bottle opener. This is the Yeti Molly bottle opener. Always be ready to open up a beer. This Yeti bottle opener attaches snugly to molly webbing and the stainless steel makes it corrosion resistant. Plus, it makes a great conversation piece. On the bottom right hand portion of the backpack, I leverage a county comm key ring loop to attach a few accessory items. The first one being the Rescue Me original keychain car escape tool. This is my go-to seatbelt cutter and window glass breaker. It's made in the USA, lightweight, and super convenient to have ready to go on any emergency kit. I include one on all of my emergency kits and multiple ones in each of our vehicles, just in case. Also on that county comm loop, I have a county comm mini pill capsule for storing a few pharmacy pills for easy access. Tucked away on the back right hand portion of the backpack, I have a Sabre Red pepper spray. This item is for self-defense purposes. I have it attached to a magnetic quick release clip for quick deployment. It's non-lethal but can offer protection against the bad guy if need be. Again, it's connected to a magnetic quick release. This one's made by Nixada. These magnetic clips are super convenient for quick access of small EDC items that are attached to the EDC backpack. The magnet is plenty strong to keep those items secure prior to deployment. This magnetic pepper spray combo was a little tip I learned from Prepper Agenda. On the bottom portion of one of the shoulder straps, I also have some dog waste bags. I have them stored in the Friends Forever Dog Leash Attachment Zippered Pouch Waste Bag Dispenser. The bags themselves are the earth rated dog poop bags, extra thick and strong poop bags for dogs. These earth friendly dog bags are for sanitation purposes. I use them as mini trash bags while out and about or as a quick mitten to put on my hand when I am hesitant to touch a public surface like a dirty gas station pump or door handle. Again, another cool trick I learned from Prepper Agenda. And those are all of the items stored on the exterior of the backpack. Now let's move on to the top small pocket area of the Vertex Gamut 2.0 backpack. I have a yellow zip tie attached to the zipper lanyard to indicate that this particular pocket is designated for comms and electronic devices. Starting off first, I have some earbuds for quick access. I'm trying to stay away from wireless devices like wireless headphones due to EMF concerns. These are decent quality earbuds that work well and it would be the end of the world if I were to lose them. The next item is a headlamp. This is the LED Lenser MH11 headlamp. This is the best headlamp that I have ever tested thus far. It's also the most expensive. I received it from LED Lenser for a possible review video. It's probably more headlamp than what is really needed for an EDC backpack, and you could easily just go with the Petzl or Black Diamond headlamp instead for $20 to $30. This one costs a whopping $160. However, if you really want to knock people's socks off with a thousand lumens, this is the headlamp for you. Also tucked away in this top pocket is a whistle on a lanyard for signaling purposes. This is the Acme Thunderer whistle, made in England. The last item that I include in here is a flashlight. This is the Streamlight ProTac 90 right angle light. I already carry a flashlight as part of my on-person EDC, so I wanted to have a flashlight that met my definition of complementary redundancy. This right angle flashlight complements my primary EDC flashlight due to it being able to do a tail stand in addition to being able to attach it to the chest strap for hands-free front-facing operation. And those are all of the items stored in that top pocket area. Now let's move on to the left side pocket of the backpack. 
But before going through the items in that left side pocket, this is also the side of the backpack that I like to carry my water bottle. Now before getting started, one of my pet peeves with the Vertex backpacks is that their water bottle holders are really small and they don't really lend themselves that well to most water bottles. For example, you can never fit a Nalgene water bottle in this particular water bottle pocket. Hopefully in the future they can make it just a little bit bigger. So right now I'm using an H3R Performance Max Quench water bottle. I'm going with this one because I think it's hilarious because it looks just like the fire extinguisher that I recently tested for H3R Performance. It features stainless steel, vacuum insulated construction with copper lining and it's BPA free. It keeps your drinks cold for 24 hours or hot drinks hot for 12 hours. Again, the H3R Performance Max Quench water bottle. Now let's open up that side pocket. I have a yellow zip tie tied to the lanyard to indicate that this is for electronics. The first item that's stored in the pocket sleeve is a power bank. This is the Anchor USB-C Portable Charger Power Core Essential 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. This is one of my most used items for EDC purposes. I'm in constant need of extra power during the day. In my opinion, Anchor makes the best portable chargers. This one charges my phone, computer, and other electronic devices multiple times before needing to be recharged. There's a zippered mesh pocket area which I store additional items. The first item being a wall charger. This is the Anchor Elite Dual Port 24 Watt USB Wall Charger. It features Anchor's Power IQ and has a foldable plug. This is a really nice wall charger that provides two USB ports and charges devices very quickly. I really like that the plug is foldable too to avoid damage. Also in that mesh pocket I have a few USB cables. The first one being a USB Type-C cable that I use for my phone. Again, this one's made by Anchor. It's the Anchor Double Braided Nylon Fast Charging Cable. I really like the braided nylon cables as I find them to be much more durable. The other cable included in there is a USB miscellaneous cable. This one's made by Amuvec. It's the Amuvec Multi-USB Charging Cable. It's a 4-in-1 fast charger cord connector with dual phone, Type-C, and micro USB port adapters. Previously, I was carrying individual cables for all of these connector types. Now I just carry one. And those are all of the items that are stored in that side left pocket. Now let's move on to the side right pocket of the Vertex Gamut 2.0 backpack. On this lanyard, I have zip ties that are both green and white. Green representing food and white representing hygiene. When you open it up, you'll see a few snacks. I think it's good to have a few non-perishable snacks available just in case you don't have immediate access to food during the day. I recommend any type of hiking snacks that you could pick up from REI for this purpose. There's another zippered mesh pocket that I store the hygiene items. Let's start going through all of those hygiene items one by one. Starting off first, I have a one ounce container of Bag Bomb. Bag Bomb has so many valuable use cases to warrant it for EDC purposes. It could be used for first aid, chap skin, and even as a fire starter, highly recommended. Next, I carry some dental items. I have a toothbrush, toothpaste, and dental floss. When you're traveling, it's nice to have some dental hygiene items ready to go. Next, I have some hygiene wipes. These are the Dude Wipes Flushable Wet Wipes. Dude Wipes are really awesome. They're individually wrapped and are super convenient for EDC purposes. You should include around three of them in your EDC kits, just in case. The next item included is a travel urinal. This is the Travel John Disposable Urinal. I recently did a review of this one, because when you have to go, you have to go. I've never needed to use this during an actual emergency, but we've had a few close calls with the kids. It's nice to know that if I were ever stuck in an elevator or in a vehicle, I would have a place to go that would be clean and spill free. Again, the Travel John disposable urinal. Last, I have some toilet paper tablets. These are coin tissues or compressed towels. I first learned about these from Canadian Prepper. Now imagine that we've all had countless times where we've been in a bathroom stall and it's been out of toilet paper. You could use the dude wipes for this purpose as well, but these are more inexpensive and plentiful. You could also use them easily for other hygiene purposes as well. I bought a pack of 500 tablets for around $40. Plus, this comes with this cool Pez style dispenser. And those are all of the items included in that side right pocket. Now let's open up the front hidden zippered pocket area of the backpack. This one features two zippered pools and I have two red zip ties wrapped around those pools. In this particular section, I store all of my trauma related first aid items. There's some molly webbing in this hidden pocket area, so I try to leverage that. Starting off first, we have two tourniquets. These are the North American Rescue Military Issue Tourniquets. This is the official tourniquet of the U.S. Army. It's used for stopping blood loss in the upper and lower extremities. A tourniquet is such an important item due to its life-saving capabilities that I've decided to carry two of them. Next to those two tourniquets, I have an additional LED safety light. I carry an extra one just in case I need to travel by night and want to be visible from both the front and the back. The next item are some medical shears. These are the Leatherman Raptor shears. 
These are by far my favorite medical shears. They're expensive, yes, but the build quality and the features make it a must-have EDC item for medical professionals. I've had this item for years now, but this is the first kit that I've actually included them in since I do have other trauma-related items. Again, the Leatherman Raptor shears, previously reviewed. I also have a single 3M flat fold N95 respirator mask. These things are kind of at a premium right now and hard to find. The next item is a medical stapler. This is the 3M Precise Multi-Shot Disposable Skin Stapler. I am not trained to use sutures, but I can use a medical stapler for closing a wound. This one is small enough to include in an EDC kit and is easy to use. Previously reviewed with the Mountain RN. So since I carry a medical stapler, you also want to make sure that you carry the medical staple removal tool. This one's also made by 3M. The staples come out really easy with this tool. It would be much more difficult and painful to do with a multi-tool, for example. Again, the 3M Disposable Skin Staple Remover. Next, I have a few specialized trauma bandages. The first one being some gauze. This is the Quick Clot Advanced Clotting Gauze. This one's commonly used by hospitals, EMS, first responders, military, law enforcement, and the general public to control hemorrhaging from bleeding injuries and fits really nicely in emergency kits. This non-allergenic gauze has little to no risk of adverse reactions and conforms readily to the wound site. The next specialized item is a chest seal. This is the North American Rescue High Fin Vent Chest Seal. This item is used for treatment of penetrating injuries to the chest, both entry and exit or multiple penetrating injuries to the chest. It's good to have these type of trauma supplies on hand in the rare case that you have to help someone in need. Of course, you should rely on the medical professionals if at all possible, but if that's not an option, it's nice to have an item like this on hand to possibly save a life. Of course, be sure you get some training on these items. And last, we have an Israeli Bandage Battle Dressing First Aid Compression Bandage. This is a combat-proven first aid device that could be used as a primary dressing, pressure applicator, secondary dressing, and a foolproof closure apparatus to secure the bandage in place. Highly recommended for trauma kits. And those are all of the items that I store in the trauma section of this EDC backpack. Now let's open up the main compartment area of the Veritex Gamut 2.0 backpack. At the top of this compartment, there's a Velcro area that has a few small items. The first item being some Purell travel hand sanitizer. With everything going on right now, it's good to have clean hands. I've leveraged the industrial strength Velcro on the back of this hand sanitizer so it stays located at the top of this flap. Next, I carry two mechanical pencils. These are the Pentel Sharp Mechanical Drafting Pencil 0.9 millimeter. This is my all time favorite pencil. I've been using it for over 25 years now. Highly recommended. Reaching into the back pocket area, I have my laptop. My laptop is currently stored in a Faraday bag. This is the Mission Darkness non-window Faraday bag for laptops. The data on my laptop is extremely important to me, so I wanted to have some sort of digital protection for it. The Mission Darkness Faraday bag is commonly used by law enforcement, military, and executives for privacy, EMP protection, travel and data security, anti-hacking, and anti-tracking assurance purposes. For the laptop, I have a MacBook Pro for work. This one's a lot smaller than my previous laptops. By reducing the size of my laptop, I was able to store more items in my urban EDC backpack. This MacBook is used for work, and I think it's a powerhouse, despite its thin size. Also stored in that back pocket area is just a simple notebook. It's always a good idea to be able to take notes when need be. A little deeper into this pocket, I have my EDC pocket organizer. Let's start going through all of the items stored in this EDC pocket organizer right now. I've been using the VanQuest EDC Maximizer Organizer for the past several years now. It's really great. On the outside, I have the I'm Your Huckleberry patch, and I've also added the VanQuest Spartan zipper pools, which are really awesome. So when you open it up, I have various miscellaneous tools stored in this EDC organizer. This kit hasn't changed too much over the years, so for the sake of time, I'm going to go rapid fire through the VanQuest EDC Maximizer organizer items. Let's get started. I have a Kingston USB drive, an on-the-go adapter for my SD and micro SD cards, a high sensitivity AM antenna for the radio that we'll be showing later in this video, the awesome Green Bell nail clippers, stainless steel made in Japan, a stainless steel Sharpie pen, a zebra stainless steel pen, a zebra stainless steel mechanical pencil, a clear ruler, the awesome V-Ha precision screwdriver set, previously reviewed. This item's new, it's the Vaughn mini bar. I have the large size version of this bar in my toolkit, and I decided to have the mini version in my EDC kit, made in the USA. The NT Cutter Pro Razor, made in Japan. This item's new, it's the Nipex Tools five inch mini pliers wrench. This one's a little expensive, but it's been recommended to me for years as a replacement for my crescent style wrench. It's a one of a kind tool that replaces a full set of inch and metric open wrenches. It's adjustable at the touch of a button and ideal for a wide variety of users, including industrial, EDC, and craft applications. I definitely consider this one an heirloom tool. 
I also have a Bic lighter in orange. Always be ready to be able to make a fire. Tucked in the back, I have a few stamps and I have a few feet of gaffer tape wrapped around an old credit card. I prefer gaffer tape for EDC purposes because it's a little less sticky when you have to remove it. And those are all the items included in the VanQuest EDC Maximizer Organizer. If I went a little too fast, all the items are listed in the PDF document. Continuing on in the main pocket area, we have a cell phone Faraday bag. This is the Silent Pocket Faraday Bag Smartphone Sleeve. This sleek, compact Faraday bag works great for EDC purposes. It blocks all signals from reaching your mobile phone, protecting it from hacking, tracking, data extraction, EMPs, and more. It also provides EMF protection against the long-term effects of EMF radiation. When you put your phone in this, you are completely off-grid. I like the Silent Pocket Faraday bag for smartphones better than the Mission Darkness ones because it's a lot more compact and sleek. You could even fit it in a jacket pocket, for example. Stay tuned for a future review of this little Faraday bag. Continuing on in the main pocket area of the backpack, we have my individual first aid kit, or IFAC. Let's start going through all the items now of this first aid kit. I use a red pencil pouch for my first aid kit. It's thin, inexpensive, and lightweight. Now for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into every individual item that's included in this first aid kit. I'll make a dedicated video for that. But in general, I have a lot of various boo-boo bandages that are stored in their own Ziploc bags based off of their category. I've tried to leverage a lot of those modern wound dressings that we learned from the Mountain RN years back. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're high quality. So things like Tegaderm, Aquacel Silver, and more. So stay tuned for a future video in which I'll go into more detail with regard to these individual first aid kits that are stored in pencil pouches. Moving back to the main compartment area of the backpack, I have some gloves and a buff hat. These are the HWI Gear Kevlar lined leather duty gloves. These ones were recommended to me by Prepper Agenda and they're currently my favorite work gloves. They are made of 100% leather and are Kevlar lined for cut resistant protection. Next we have the buff headwear. I prefer this headwear over a bandana for EDC purposes due to the ease of use and the UV protection that it offers. I first learned about the buff headwear from the Mountain RN many years back and now I have several of them in different colors and patterns. Now let's fully open the clamshell opening of this main compartment area. There's two mesh zippered pocket areas that I have additional items stored. Let's start off first with the top zippered pocket area. The first item included is a nitrile gloves pouch. This is the Rothko Enhanced Molded Latex Glove Pouch. This particular glove pouch is frequently used by crime scene investigators and stores several pairs of nitrile gloves for EDC purposes. Again, I store several pairs of nitrile gloves in this little pouch, and I use several different types of nitrile gloves. I carry them for both first aid and for PPE purposes. The next item is a little pharmacy module. I carry multiple miscellaneous, individually wrapped over-the-counter medications in this small little pouch. So medications like painkillers, anti-diarrhea, and other common medications that you would find in a first aid kit. I prefer to have all these small little medications stored in their own individual pouch. Now let's move on to the bottom zippered pocket area of that clamshell opening. The first item is a Mylar blanket. This is the Swiss Safe Emergency Mylar Thermal Blanket. I try to have an emergency survival blanket in all of my kits. There's so many different applications of use. This particular manufacturer is of higher quality than most. You could get these ones in camouflage or even in a signal panel design. The next item is a smoke mask. This is the pocket smoke mask. This one's a little hard to find nowadays. This item is for building evacuation during a fire. It is the thinnest smoke mask that I've been able to find. It's rated to allow for 20 minutes of smoke filter effectiveness. Next, I have a particle mask. This is the Ready Mask Adhesive Sealing Particle Mask. I previously did a review of this particular mask. It seals to your face, but you're also able to wear glasses on top of it. This is a one-time use mask, so I have it stored in this kit for evacuation purposes. It helps protect against the flu, molds, pepper spray, bacteria, dust, pollution, spores, and more. Again, the Ready Mask Adhesive Sealing Particle Mask. And the last item is a contractor garbage bag. This particular one is made by Husky. There are multiple use cases for a heavy duty contractor bag. It could be used for a makeshift shelter, a backpack rain cover, and more. And those are all of the items stored in that main compartment area of the backpack. Now let's move to the back zippered pocket area of the Vertex Gamut 2.0 backpack. Now this specific section is one of the primary reasons that I went with this backpack. It allows you a place to fully leverage the Vertex Velcro attachment system. This one features a really nice grab pull zipper handle. When you open it up, as you see, I have a whole bunch of items that are attached to the wall of this particular section using Velcro. I have them all organized based off of the color of prepping. So I've included the VanQuest Preppers Color Coding Kit patch on the top. Let's start going through all of these items now one by one. Let's start off first with the bottom. So the first item that I have is a Silcock key. This is a great item to include in basically any emergency preparedness kit. 
it allows you to access the water access points outside of industrial buildings. I used to only carry these in my emergency kits, but now I'm starting to carry it in my EDC backpack thanks to Rogue Preparedness, who was able to convince me that this is definitely something for Urban EDC. The next item are some hex bits. This is the Vera hex bit set. I don't really need these for EDC, but there's been a few times when I really needed a hex bit and didn't have one, and then I was heckled for not having one. I had a coworker say, what do you mean you don't have the hex bit? I thought you were the urban prepper. Now I'm ready for them. Vera makes awesome tools, by the way. Highly recommend it. The next item is a screwdriver. This is the Vera Craftform Compact 25 pouch set. This is currently my favorite screwdriver. It's high quality, compact, and feature rich. I've been using it for several years now and just love Vera screwdrivers. The next item is for water purification. This is the Steripend Adventurer Opti UV Personal Water Purifier. I stopped carrying a water filter for EDC purposes because I never used it. However, this UV pen is really convenient when out and about at restaurants and when you may be unsure of the quality of the water that you're drinking. Just put it in the water, turn it on, and let the UV kill anything bad that's in that water. The next item that looks like a candy bar is actually a radio. I have it wrapped in aluminum foil to help with EMP protection, just in case. This is the Countycom GB5 single sideband general purpose radio. I didn't need to have a new radio. The last AM radio that I had in my EDC kit worked just fine. However, I wanted to have single sideband capabilities for my kit just in case. The Countycom radios have always been really slick. This one has been working really nicely for its intended purposes and I've been programming it to many stations to listen to. Stay tuned for a review of this Countycom GP5 single sideband general purpose radio. On this particular item, I'm using one of the Veritex Tactigami attachments for attaching it to this back panel. Next, we have some batteries. I have four AAA end loop batteries. The end loop batteries are expensive, but I think they're the best option for preppers. They're rechargeable, they hold their charge for a long time, and they're really high quality. I have them stored in this Wizotech battery storage case with some industrial Velcro attached to the back of it. I also have four AA batteries. I've been trying to make the switch to rechargeable end loop batteries as much as possible. Again, I use the industrial strength Velcro on the back of the battery holders to attach to the Velcro of the Vertex Gamut 2.0 backpack. And at the top, you see that little VanQuest color coding kit. Those are all the items that are attached to that back Velcro area. Hidden in the back of this particular section, there's a little panel area, which I have additional items stored at. The first item being a map. This is the Rand McNally Seattle street map. I think you should always have a physical map in your emergency kits, just in case you are unable to use the digital map available from your smartphone. Also stored in this back section, I have the survival cheat sheet. I did a video of these particular cheat sheets. It's kind of like having a calculus cheat sheet for a math test, but instead we have a bunch of survival information for a survival test. I have it organized based off of the color of prepping. You're able to download the PDFs for these survival cheat sheets for free and print them off yourself, or you could order them directly from me and I'll have them shipped directly to you. And the main item stored in this particular section is a ballistic shield. This is another reason why I went with the Vertex Gamut 2.0 backpack. It's a key feature of this backpack. This particular one is made by Premier Body Armor. I wish that I didn't feel the need to integrate this item into my EDC backpack, but there have been multiple shootings close to my office that made me up the priority in having some level of protection. This ballistic panel is specifically designed to fit in the Vertex Gamut 2.0 backpack. It is lightweight at around two pounds, flexible, thin at around 0.22 inches thick, and is tested to meet NIJ ballistic standards for level 3A. It's TSA approved, made in the USA, and legal to own in all 50 states. It will stop common handgun rounds such as 9mm, 40 caliber, 45, and 44 magnum, in addition to being special threat tested against 12 gauge shotgun, buckshot, and slugs. It is also stab and slash resistant. It costs around $200 and it expires after about 5 years. However, this gives me a little bit of extra peace of mind for around $40 a year. Hopefully I never have to use this particular item, but it is kind of nice knowing that it's back there. And that wraps up all of the items that are stored in this version of my Urban EDC Backpack version 4.0. Fully loaded, this backpack weighs in at just under 20 pounds, which is the maximum that I wanted to have for EDC purposes. So that includes both the laptop and a full water bottle. If you don't include the water bottle, it weighs a little bit less. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video featuring my updated Urban EDC Backpack version 4.0. I think this particular version provides me with a lot of capabilities for EDC purposes in an urban environment. So leave your comments below in the comment section regarding this video. As a quick reminder, I've provided a PDF document. You can download it by clicking the link in the description box below. It has a list of all the items that were covered in this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this one. Again, this one featured my updated Urban EDC Backpack version 4.0. See you guys next time. Thank you.